Good morning, Derbs. How are you, my man? Good morning. I'm great. Um, let's go LSU football first. How do you feel about the Tigers going into the weekend with a 8-15 matchup? This is a retro matchup, Derbs, with uh, with the Tigers and the Rebels on Saturday night in Death Valley. Uh, it's exciting. 8-15 start. Give give the people in Baton Rouge and, and out there at Tiger Stadium an extra hour or so to, to get after it. Should be pretty rowdy. Um, what have you made through for, for LSU through the first four games of the season? I know that uh, a lot of people surprised on Monday morning to see LSU ranked top five in the country and undefeated going into uh, really now the, the teeth of their conference schedule. Well, I think we all kind of expected a little bit of a letdown um, after the big Auburn win. And, um, you know, I, I think the players went out there, played really well in the first half. And then kind of when you let off the gas, you let off the gas, it's hard to go back. Um, and, and I think they got it together at the end and, and got the win. Um, but a lot of that is a little bit of that second half. You start looking forward to that next game. You're, you're, these kids are young. Um, you know, they're, they're thinking about, okay, we have this big matchup. It's Ole Miss. And then these other games coming, uh, coming at us, we're up 20. It was a 24 nothing. Um, yeah. And then it just kind of slips away. And, you know, the quarterback for La Tech did a heck of a job. He's got a great arm. He's athletic. They had, they had a good receiver, uh, number six. Um, and, and it just kind of slipped away. They did a good job of, of you know, getting the ball downfield and scoring and had some lucky catches. But uh, at the end of the game, we win and we look forward. Number five in the country looks good next to that LSU name. In some years, I've looked at, like, a number eight or a number three and been like, hey, we're not that team. Um, and this year, I feel comfortable in that top ten. Um, we'll have to prove it. And I think facing – Three big time wide receivers and a guy who can sling it, um, you know, late on Saturday night. It's going to be fun to watch. Derbs, you pitched at the highest level for 13 years against uh, Major League Baseball's greatest hitters. What do you make of Max Scherzer last night becoming the 17th pitcher since 1900 to strike out 300 batters in one season? It's ridiculous. It, it's hard to wrap your brain around. He's only, it's, it, he's only the sixth guy since 1990. Right. And, and you know, because baseball's changed a little bit, guys throw less innings. Um, but it was almost like last night he knew that number was out there, and and he just chased it. He chased it down. Uh, his stuff was filthy. I've talked to guys, and they said the way that it comes out of his hand, it's spinning different. It's coming out of, like, left field, out of his armpit. Uh, you just don't pick it up, and he's so intense out there. I mean, they're not in anything, but he's out there, and it looks like Game 7 of the World Series to him every time he's out there. I love that about him. He's 34 years old. He's the oldest to accomplish the feat. Um, does, it, does that make it a little more special? It, it does. I, I think guys can play a little bit longer because of nutrition and the way that they strength train and the way that they uh, take care of their bodies and the PT level uh, at the big league level. Um, they do a really good job of keeping themselves healthy. But I think it's more impressive that he, that he hits that number in, in the day and age we're playing in, where you throw six innings, seven innings, and you're out, and they bring in the, the, the stable of relievers to come in and, and clean you up. So I think it's extremely impressive. Uh, he's not going to win the Cy Young. He could, uh, but DeGrom's had such a good run this year, and, and uh, Nola's going to probably finish third. But all three in any other year um, would have the Cy Young you know, far and away. Strohs get to win 100 last night. They win the uh, and clinch the American League Western Division title last night. They'll crank up the Divisional Series versus Cleveland on October 5th. Over there at uh, Minute Maid last night, Bregman gets uh, home run number 31. Check out this stat, uh, Derbs, last night for Bregs. He went two for five, extending his club record streak of reaching base safely on the road to 53 games. That's the longest since Derek Jeter accomplished that back in 2006 and 2007 when he went for 59 base hits um, in, in those seasons. Bregman here. Uh, what do you make of it now? Back to back division uh, division titles, hundred wins last night, and thirty one home runs. Well, first of all, you, you win a division. It doesn't matter if you have eighty eight wins or a hundred wins. It's it's tough to do. It's tough to repeat and do it. Um, I hope they celebrated hard um, as they should. And, and you know, some guys, uh, you know, people ask me, well, what happened when you won your second or third division in a row? Did you celebrate differently? And maybe just a little bit, but you still celebrate. You still get after it, and and it's just a, a very difficult thing to accomplish. So I, you know, I really hope they went after it hard there. As far as his uh, 53 game road streak, I love guys that show up on the road. Those big hits are getting on base in front of another crowd, shutting them down, taking momentum away from from a road team, uh, the home team when you're on the road. 
I like the guys that show up on the road, and he's one of those guys, uh, just a gamer. Um, you know, I was looking at it. The, the New York Yankees have 97 wins. They've got, you know, if they go three and two, they win 100, and then they have to play. Right now, they would play the Oakland A's in a one-game wild card, and the A's have 95 wins. So I, I almost feel like Major League Baseball, it's great that they keep these pennant races going long or the wild card race going long, but playing a three-game series, I mean, these are two really, really good teams that are going to yeah. play each other. And it might, it, I mean, I've been in that wild card game. I was with it in Atlanta. We, we lost, and it was like, wait, we're done? You know, we don't get to come back tomorrow, 162 game marathon, and it comes down to, you know, boom, a 40 yard dash. And, and it feels over. weird. It, it does feel weird. It doesn't feel like, uh, you know, it doesn't feel completed. But at the same time, you know, it does make things uh, interesting. It's kind of like running those treadmill sprints. It's on 13 or 14, and you're standing up with both feet on the side of it. You jump on, and, and it's go time. So I, I get it. Um, and then on the other side, you have two teams that are, are really hot right now, Colorado, Milwaukee. They're both chasing down wild cards, uh, the Dodgers and the Cubs. Um, so, and those teams are going to have to play each other. I think uh, on the other side of the wild card, it would be Milwaukee and Colorado right now. And both those teams are, are playing great baseball. Uh, Yelich for Milwaukee might be the MVP. He keeps getting huge hits um, and, and puts up huge numbers. So it's, it's an exciting time. Um, a lot of the other teams are kind of settling in. You get to get your rotation right, uh, maybe rest some guys. Um, yeah, I think I heard A.J. Hinch say, when you're resting, rest. But when you do go out and play, you play at 100%, um, which is the perfect approach. Um, and then, you know, on the other side of this coin, and because only so many teams make it in, these last five games, for, for Aaron Nola or other guys on other teams that aren't going to make the playoffs, it hurts, it stings, but at the same time, when that last game ends and you get to go home, you get to come home to Baton Rouge and maybe go see some LSU yeah. uh, football games and enjoy the weather here in October and that type of stuff. So it's exciting. It's not as exciting as going to the playoffs, but that's just the nature of baseball. And, and when you make it into the playoffs, it's awesome. These last games are exciting either way. Talking to Chad Durbin. Uh, so you mentioned that you hope that the Astros, you know, celebrate their big hundredth win. Uh, it, how does partying in the MLB work? So, like, if you get those hundred wins, if you have a game the next day, is everybody still going out and getting wild that night? Well, the truth is, during that long stretch of six months, you do go out and you do, you know, partake, and maybe a little too much sometimes. When you show up the next day. You go, you go right back to your routine. You might not feel good, but you get in there, you do your pregame work, you, you, know, you eat your, your, your lunch while you're watching some film, and, and then you get in, you do a little workout, you go throw, you do BP or whatever. A lot of teams will bang BP the next day, kind of give guys an extra hour and a half to, to catch up, maybe a show and go, <laughs> that type of stuff. But, you know, it's not like they can't. I mean, they're young. They can, they can bounce back pretty quick. I don't know if I could uh, anymore, but uh, it, it's due to be celebrated. If you know you're pitching the next day, uh, and maybe, maybe you swig the, the champagne you know, and a little less than the rest of the guys. But uh, I miss that smell. I can smell carpet and, and champagne and what it smells like the next day when you walk in the clubhouse. <laughs> it, it, it just sticks in your nose. It, it's funny. Um, you know, I, I, I miss it a ton. Derbs, the next time we talk to you, it will be October. As uh, next Wednesday, October 3rd, we will uh, be back with you to talk about the, uh, the postseason. Great stuff, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Tiger's back, too, by the way.